Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Custom Apparel Startups podcast. And today we we have another special guest, and uh, we've invited on Mike Angel here from Coldesi. So thank you and welcome to the show. Would you just give everybody um, just a quick summary of what you do here at Coldesi? All right. Thank, thank you for having me, Mark. Um, my name is Mike Angel, and I head on-demand business development for Coldesi. Uh, and on demand means all things e-commerce and all things with volumes of little as one, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we concentrate on with on demand is being able to uh, sell products, digital printed products online, um, and also be able to produce them efficiently. So that includes e-commerce technology, uh, order management technology, as well as equipment like DTF printers. Which okay. Are phenomenal for on demand types of businesses. There's lots of 20s right now, right? So 2021, 2022 was a really big, 2023 were really big jumps in the direct to film to printing industry. And, and you've been in this industry. Um, 60 years or something like that. Yeah, so 572, 572 years. years. Yeah. Um, but you start, but in all seriousness, did you start in the nineties or when did you start working in this industry? But in 1998, 1998. Okay. So you've been in this industry, uh, um, about a decade longer than myself. And, um, I feel like I know a lot. So i um, throwing another decade of experience on that. I, I, I can only imagine all the things you've learned. And over the years, you've seen um, DTG printing come alive, embroidery machines evolve, um, white toner printing come in. But a lot of people are talking about how direct to film printing is different than a lot of those. And I'm just curious on what's your opinion on is direct to film different than those and what is different about it? Uh, that's a great question. So DTF, direct to film. Um, is a game changer. I, I hate to use that term. We use it, <laughs> we, we, throughout the throughout the years, we've used that several times, but it it, it truly is. Um, and there are two things that are special about DTF. The first is it's 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 a, it is its own thing. Um, in terms of the, the technical aspect of direct-to-film printing. In mm -hmm. other words, the print itself. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it can be, you know, people try to compare it to vinyl or toner transfers or screen printing, but it truly is its own media. Mm -hmm. Medium? Yeah, uh, both. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because the media that it, it goes on is it, is a specialty type of film and the medium itself is actually the the what is being created right. is different than everything else. Right. So, you know, technically it's a water-based pigment that um has high washability. It it has a very vibrant uh, vibrant look. Mm -hmm. Um it the the pigment can be profiled, so it's it's, it's easily um, profiled to match um, customer color palettes. Um, it uh, we've got fifty plus washes um, before you see degradation to the prints. With with you need a spectrophotometer to see it after fifty plus washes. We've had studies done at the Florida State University's uh, textile lab. Um, it has a white ink backing, which not only provides, uh, the opacity and gives the, the artwork pop, um, but provides the, uh, the ability for the powdered adhesive to stick to. So basically what you have is a solidified ink for mm -hmm. lack of a, yeah. A, better way to describe mm -hmm. describe it mm -hmm. and that glue is what's pressed on to any type of fabric so that is a combination that we haven't seen before to be able to take one printed piece of artwork and apply that same print across a wide variety of products so anything cotton anything polyester um 
And that could go for apparel, it could go for just straight material, um, it could go for caps, soft-sided coolers. So you have your soft goods, backpacks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It also has a low well time. So it's a very okay. uh, low time. You're talking seven, 10 seconds worth of press time and very low t- temperatures comparative to some of the other transfer systems. So at, at uh, with your cotton products, you're up around 300 degrees mm-hmm. um, to really get a good... Uh, melt and weld and and adhesion to to the fabric. Uh, But if you're you're on something a little more delicate, like performance wear, which is very popular, you're wearing a performance polo right now. And I'll I'll address that in a a, a second, why Uh this is so significant. Um, But you can then drop the temperature down to 270-ish. So there's no Mm -hmm. uh, dye migration or releasing from the substrate. And so right off the bat, technically, you've got a, a beautiful print that's stretchy, that mm-hmm. feels good, and goes across a wide variety of products. And the transfers themselves don't have a shelf life. So you can pre, pre-make pre some and store them without any issues as well. Mm-hmm. So very versatile. Uh, the second thing that this all addresses um, is the ability to meet that on-demand uh, process and philosophy we've been talking about, to be able to now profitably Profitably mm-hmm. print <laughs> one unit. Right. That's that's use the word again, game changer yeah. in the industry to profitably be able to produce one unit. So you have a very low uh, material cost as well. Mm-hmm. Um, material cost is around a half a cent per square inch. Right. So a ten by ten piece of artwork is going to run you fifty cents or so. Yeah. And you can produce it quickly. Um, it can go across a wide variety of products, um, and and with that, um, you're able to then sell as little as one product, hopefully through your your web store, right? <laughs> and 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 the end customers will pay a premium for the ability to purchase just one for you because it, yeah. traditionally they haven't been able to do that, right? Right? You have minimum quantities. Uh, color requirements, how many mm-hmm. color separations and all these requirements and setup fees and all sorts of things. Um, but you can now produce as little, as little as one unit profitably, get a premium for it, um, but also be able to scale with the same technology and produce many. So right. now you can produce run, redundant runs. So whether it's one or whether it's a thousand, you can you can do with the DTF system. Yeah. Yeah, and the setup time is pretty minimal for whether you're doing one or a thousand. You just it's literally going on a computer and typing in one or typing in a thousand and yeah. hitting go. Yeah. Uh, so true you, digital, true digital, true digital production. Yeah, and so you said a, a lot of great things there. So a few things <laughs> popped in my head. Um, one kind of you compared to some other technologies, right? So um, uh, popular technology for decades now is like sublimation printing. It's it's a great way to create a transfer and store it, you know, for a period of time and then, and then place it on the, on a piece of apparel or hard good or something like that. The problem with, with sublimation goods is you're very limited on the materials and the colors and materials that you can work with. So a ton of people are doing that technology and then they tell customers no, when they want a dark blue shirt with a white logo on it, because you literally cannot do that. Um, so then alternatively, they may screen print it or vinyl cut it, which has been, again, another technology for decades, which um, are both great and they look good and they wash well and all that stuff because their technology has been around forever. Um, the challenge is, is what I have right now is a one, two, three, four, five, six color logo. So for one, if a customer hands you this, you're probably going to, if you're doing one of those methods, your first instinct is probably to see if you can get them to reduce the number of colors because that's more work for you. And you either have to charge them more for the work, do more work for less money uh, than another customer or convince them to do it in one color, right? So um, direct to film printing is a digital process. So it really doesn't matter if it's one color or a hundred, it's the same amount of work, right? So um, that's a wonderful change too to the business is the amount of colors. And if there's great gradients or anything like that, for the most part, you can just be, oh, sure, I can print that logo. Um, and then we've got um, other technologies like 
um, DTG or um, white toner printing, which are digital processes that you don't have to worry about colors. Um, and um, the, the materials you're going to print on, uh, I don't want to get too much in the weeds on those things, but um, both of those are reasonably versatile to some degree. But um, the problem with those is just the time, right? So, so uh, white toner printing and DTG printing, depending on what you're printing, how large it is, et cetera, et cetera, can eat up a decent amount of time to get those printed. Um, and that's not a crazy amount of time, minutes, let's just say, right? Like a few minutes, um, which is not that big of a deal, but times 100 is 300 minutes. That's a, that's a decent amount of time to work. Um, where on your direct-to-film printer to do 300, you're clicking print, it's going through the process. You're not having to do all your transfers one at a time at that point in time. You're just going through the process and you're doing other things in your shop while it's printing 300 of these. And then when you're done, you're applying them to the shirts, like you said, seven to 10 seconds at a time versus other processes with either curing on DTG or, or on white toner could be uh, 30 seconds or 45 seconds or a minute or depending on what you're printing, it's a little different. So we can just say minimum like half the heat press time and then you're not doing a single garment at a time in your printing process, you're printing on a roll. So that's really cool things comparing to those technologies. Uh, um, then there's screen print transfers, which I'm not going to claim to be a super dark expert on, but I've done them before. And I'll say that I had, when I had done screen trans print transfers before, this was before I, or right when I got, or just before I got in the industry, I was selling some, uh, I was selling some apparel and I would order screen print transfers. And I remember one thing with these was that uh, if I made, if I touched them while they were too hot or tapped them with my heat press again, I could like melt off a part of the transfer or damage it. And um, for one, direct to film does not do that. I mean, you can tap it with the heat press a bunch of times. If you had a wrinkle in the shirt, you can just iron it. You can just hit it again, you know, and, and it still holds up. Um, can you tell me a bit more about comparing it to screen print transfers and benefits or, or not? Yeah, I mean, screen print transfers are going to fall into the same category in terms of minimum requirements. Okay. Right? You're not going to be able to order one screen print transfer. You've got to order a batch of them. You've got to mm -hmm. use a minimum quantity. And we're also talking about screen print, so there's color separation. Mm -hmm. um, and so can you just um, break that down, what that means for just a minute for anybody who, who might not know? So for every color in a logo or piece of artwork, there needs to be a screen burnt. There needs okay. to be a, a screen made. Uh, to, and so with that um, um, comes a cost factor. So the more colors, the more the print's going to cost you. And the, the, more, there, the more the minimum requirement is going to be because you have to set up a, a press to do so. Um, and so um, it's cost prohibitive uh, to, to, to be able to, to, again, sell online and meet the demands of the current customer base. And mm -hmm. This is what the customer is asking for, right? The customers these days have budgets or they don't want to order you know, a couple hundred uh, to meet a certain price point, or uh, they want the ability to um, buy a wider variety of products at less quantities. Right. It's just, that's just the way it is um, across the industry. Um, so that's a major difference technically. Um, yes, you mentioned some of the difference in terms of technically, uh, mechanically, the, the, the heat temperatures are different. The uh, application process is a bit different and not as, as tolerant and, and easy as it is with DTF. Right, right. I found the first time I did a, a, a direct-to-film transfer, I was like, I was just like, wow, that was easy. Yes. <laughs> like, And I've done, um, I feel like every type of technology out there, I've done just about all of them in the customization industry um, outside of a few. And um, maybe just the only stuff I haven't done is probably like laser you know, or, uh, or something like that, you know, but that's a machine doing all the work anyway. But anything that involves hands, I mean, I've pretty much touched all the different types of transfers and all of them have their little quirks and 
But the first time I did direct to film, I was literally just, I closed it, I opened it and it hot peel. I was like, wow, that was actually freaking super easy. Um, and you mentioned the performance fabrics. One of the challenges with doing performance fabrics are, um, they can, I'm just gonna use a bunch of words, uh, distort, discolor, burn, yeah. change the, the consistency of the fabric easy. So if you have to do sublimation, which is really high temperature, or you have to put it under a heat press for a really long period of time, you can actually end up with a section of your shirt that looks a little bit different. Yes. So when you get to bring that temperature all the way down to like, what, 270, 280, 290, depending, something within that range, um, for like seven, eight, nine seconds, that really minimizes the chance yes. of that happening. And uh, the way you can kind of think about it is, um, you know, if you dropped... The way I, I think about it, at least sometimes, if you had a plastic spatula and you dropped it in a pan for a second and picked it up, nothing's going to happen to it. Like it's designed to be able to handle that heat. You just pick it up, everything's fine. But if you drop that spatula in the pan and didn't realize it and you let it sit in there for one minute, you're going to have a spatula that is either completely melted or at minimum warped and out of shape that you'll never get back into shape. And I think that's kind of the difference is that you can put a piece of apparel that is susceptible to heat over time. And then I'll, I was watching something on TV last night and I'll just finish with this example because it's, I like it. <laughs> so I was watching Mythbusters. You're familiar with the show. Yeah. It was just old season. Uh, of course, it's been, it has been on the TV for a while, but they did this, this myth where it was like a, a video of people shooting shrimp out of an air cannon and they <laughs> shot it through breadcrumbs and and eggs and fire and then you know in, in the end the, the fake internet video you know they fried shrimp through a cannon and um so the myth sponsors were trying to can we even cook a shrimp that way and they and they set up forges that make swords i don't know five of them like thousands of degrees and they shot raw shrimp through them thousands of degrees for like i don't know 10 20 feet and the shrimp was raw on the other end, right? Because like heat is okay for a short period of time for just about anything. You can put your hand on a candle. Um, so I think that's something to consider. That's like a great thing about DTF is because of the short time and temperature, just the tolerance of apparel is much greater and much less dangerous to messing things up versus sublimation or anything where you have to physically put heat on something for sometimes literally a minute. Right. Um, okay, great. So, um, yeah, that was about 15 minutes on direct to film printing. Um, and, uh, so what we'll probably do is maybe even we'll have this episode in full. I'm hoping what we'll do is we'll, um, also for those, um, watching or listening, um, I am planning on probably cutting it too. So maybe we just have this little 15 minute direct to film talk separately. So if you're watching that, and uh, you're curious about some of the mentions of selling online, then uh, please be sure to go to customapparelstartups.com and, and look for the episode with Mike Angel where we talk about Shopify because there's a whole longer section just about that. Just kind of add that note at the end there. But um, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. I'm sure a bunch of people are have learned a lot and are curious, and we hope to have you on again to talk about some more topics. Um, do you have any... Um, uh, any final thoughts or words or anything you wanted to get out um, before we we uh, everyone hits stop? Oh, well, I just encourage everyone to sell online, to make sure that your business is selling online and to know that we've done a lot of the heavy lifting mm -hmm. to help you fast track and get that done and it'll really help your business. Yeah, yeah, it truly is. We, we mentioned a lot of reasons why, but um, I think ultimately uh, the, the, the kicker in business is... Um, time is like the number one right and then um and that's everything i think really when it when it really comes down to it um so if somebody has to f just go and kind of go on through the example for a minute if somebody's got to fill out a form and bring it to somebody and that person has to bring it to somebody else who delivers it to you and then you produce a shirt and you bring it back somewhere else and it goes there sometimes people just don't want to do it you know somebody's just like I don't have time to go to school and fill out the form. I don't want to, work. I don't want the hat that bad. Um, and, uh, and then also the time for your business, right? That you have to get an email, reply to it, get it again, reply to it, finally get the order, deliver it. 
um, send them a proof mock-up, like you said, make sure they say yes. And then it's like a week before the, the order even got placed. And then the person just says, you know what? I was, I was getting the hat for a baseball game and it, it's already passed. Season's over. We lost. I don't need it anymore. You know? So uh, this just allows your customers to directly go. They can order. It's easy. Reduces a ton of time for them. The mock-up's already done. You get the order. It's got the right logo in it, the right color, everything, because the customer's seen it and approved it. And you can just print it and bring it right to them. Whether you deliver in person or mail it, I mean, that's up to you. But there is a 100% chance that somebody would not have placed an order with you versus them placing it online. So you will get more orders just for being online for the convenience for those percentage of people who are just be like, nah, never mind, it's too much work, you know? Cause we all, we all do that, right? Something's, how many times have you driven down the road and it's on the left, the store is on the left side of the highway and you're like, never mind. <laughs> I don't really feel, I don't want to cross traffic that bad to, to get an extra whatever. I'll just not get it, right. you know? And then you, then you don't buy it. So um, it's true of physical locations and, and virtual locations. Um, well, anyway, thanks again. Oh, thank um, everybody out there, appreciate you listening. Please visit coldesi.com to check out um, everything that we mentioned, all the different pieces of equipment and, and all that stuff. We have all uh, that stuff available to learn about and check out Clickware and the on-demand products if those are right for you too. And uh, go to customapparelstartups.com where you can check out this episode uh, online. And I'll put in some notes and some links to the various things that we talked that we spoke about um, as well. So uh, thanks everybody and uh, have a good business.